You are just, O Lord, and your judgment is right. Treat your servant in accord with your merciful love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we gather here on this beautiful late summer day, we offer our contrition, our penance, and our confession to God in acknowledging our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. My almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. You alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, by whom we are... Oh, wrong one, sorry. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into your hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. <laughs> Moses said to the people, Now, Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. In your observance of the commandments of the Lord your God, which I enjoin upon you, you shall not add to what I command you, nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully, for thus will you give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations, who will hear of all these statutes and say, this great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him. Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law which I am setting before you today? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. James. Dearest brothers and sisters, all good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. He will to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deluding yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him, why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, Well, did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, The people honors honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from the outside can defile the person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. From within, people from their hearts come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. All the evils and sins that we have just heard about, there's one that is missing. Indifference. Indifference. Indifference to God, indifference to one another, 
indifference to our friends and family, our neighbor, our community, indifference to our church, and understanding that all that God tells us in Scripture, that he begs us to draw near to him, but from time to time, because of human condition, we become indifferent. When I look at the cross, I have a great devotion to the passion. Great devotion to the passion. I think everything is really focused on the passion of Jesus Christ and in his crucifixion and what God did for us and what he wants for us and hopes for us. But if there could be anything more different than from indifference is the cross. And sometimes I think our blessed Lord would prefer the cross of Calvary than the indifference of the people that he loves and wants to save and call him and bid him to him. You know, it's interesting. We, we like to talk about the big issues. You know, we can get caught up on the big issues. A lot of people don't like the moral teaching of the church. But these are the words of our blessed Lord. Blasphemy, licentiousness, lust. These are things that we need to guard against. Somebody once said to me recently, they said, boy, you're a real right winger. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? I said, if you're going to talk about settled questions of faith, settled question of what the faith means about being saved and what the church believes, I said that if you're going to call me a right winger, I bristle at that term, but then I'll raise my hand and say, yes, I will always err on the side of the faith. I don't always do it perfectly. None of us here do. But the point is here is that we can never be hypocrites to the people that don't and say, well, did you hear about this one? I can't believe they did that. We can't be pharisaical. But we have to follow the path of the Lord, follow the path of his kindness, of his generosity, and the example and the witness that he gave to us on that cross of Calvary. And the cross of Calvary should never, ever, 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 ever distract us. It should never not remind us of what it means to not be indifferent. God was not indifferent to us. I've mentioned this before in so many ways, but our beautiful windows in this church are the windows of the salvation history. And we see around us everywhere God's love and mercy. From the fall of Lucifer to the ascension, the crucifixion, the resurrection, and the love that God has given us and bestowed upon us. That's the furthest thing from indifference that we can see. So keep our minds and hearts fixed on Christ and on Calvary. And on a personal note, I would ask us all today to please remember our service members who were so shamefully left behind by our government and slaughtered. These are the people that protect us and keep us safe. We might not always do it correctly. We might not always do it right. But when I saw the pictures of the American and British servicemen carrying babies out of the house and trying to protect them, it struck a chord in my heart. I had a cousin who served in the Grenadier Guards of the British Army and was killed in Afghanistan. And to see this happen, this complete botch up, the lack of honor for the people that have served, for the meaning of purpose. These men and women have not died in vain. And I ask you for the prayers for their family 
and for those that they love, and for our world and our community, that we may prevail in love and peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. My brothers and sisters, let us please be upstanding as we recite the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Conscious of our dependence upon Almighty God, we offer up our prayers and petitions unto the throne of heavenly grace. For Pope Francis, our Holy Father, for Sean Patrick, our Cardinal Archbishop, we pray that they may persevere in their ministry and in the protection of the faith. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all of those who are suffering in mind, body, and spirit particularly from addiction. And we pray that the healing hand of the divine physician may touch their hearts and make them whole again. We pray to the Lord. We pray particularly for all first responders, for doctors, nurses, fire and police, and our service men and women, all who rush out when we rush in. We pray to the Lord. For all of our faithful departed, and particularly for Stephen Verdelina, whose Mass is being offered today on his first year anniversary. And we remember our service people that died in Afghanistan. We pray to the Lord. And for all of these intentions and your intentions, which we hold in the secret of our heart. We pray to the Lord. And through the intercession of our Blessed Lady Mary, who is quick to hear our prayers, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and more worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Please be seated.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by the rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by coming down upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The history of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister unto you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean Patrick, our Cardinal Archbishop, all the clergy and the religious. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the 
Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Body of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life.
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are them who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. But we do have a few announcements. Catechists are needed. We need people to step up to the plate. These are urgent needed ministries. We cannot pass the faith on to our children. I would say is if you don't feel comfortable with technology, maybe there's something we can do with it because it won't be, it'll be virtual for at least the fall semester. Uh, but we really, 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 truly need catechists. We must pass on the faith. Uh, next week's second collection, as is also the custom of the Catholic Church, is for our property and grounds. We glorify God's temple by your generosity and benefaction. And also, save the date for the ministry and Cory Fair. Cory forms in the sense of volunteers. Uh, we're confining it to not all the masses because we're having a difficult time getting volunteers and we need volunteers to staff these things. So we're doing it after the 10 o'clock and the 11.30 mass to not tax the system. But we do have some surprises and joyful things for you. So we do encourage you to come to it. Uh, and I would just like to say one thing, that <clears throat> my brothers and sisters, I understand that there's great fear going on with the potential of this Delta variant and all the rest. I, I've, I've been reading about this to kind of know more about it. We're going to be living with this for a while. And if it's not this variant, it's going to be another. If there's something that doesn't make you feel safe, don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, but we just are going to have to move forward safely, carefully, and responsibly. And so be safe and know that every day here, you are prayed for and loved by your priests. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Please join in singing our recessional hymn found on page four of the bulletin, For the Beauty of the Earth.